All right, chapter number five, Petty Cash Book. We've already done, we've already done Cash Book, and Petty Cash Book is basically a mini cash book. It is used for the petty values. Petty means small, right? For the small amounts, we'll be using Petty Cash Book instead of the main cash book we just learned about in the previous classes. In this chapter, we'll use we'll, we'll explain the use of and process accounting data in Petty Cash Book. Again, Petty Cash Book can be translated into mini cash book okay explain and apply the impress system of petty cash let's see if you understand the normal cash book this one's really easy the main focus is to understand the system the way it works so it follows something called the impressed system the impress system is where every period begins with the same amount so a period can be one month a week, fortnight, fortnight is, is a period of two weeks, every day, but it's a bit unusual to do it every day. So every period starts with the same amount. And once the period ends, which can be a week, month, fortnight, once the period ends, the amounts that were spent are then refilled. Does that make sense? Up to the impressed amount again. Does that make sense? Most of you get it. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. All right, so that is the idea of uh, impress system. So we have something called impressed amount, which is also known as the float. Impressed amount, the float. This is the amount, like let's say every period starts with $500 in petty cash. Well, before I start talking about this, I should explain you what, I should re-explain what petty cash is. Well, it is like, a you know what, for small expenses, we will give this responsibility to one of the staff members, the receptionist, let's say, will be our petty cashier, right? We make our receptionist the petty cashier. So we give them $500 every week, and we say, if the of if there are little office expenses, pay out of this uh, this little cash box, right? Petty cash box. Some words you need to be aware of. Petty cash, box, or till. You got it? Yes. So, there will be a physical place where this 500 will be kept in cash, and the employees, they will take reimbursements. So let's say an employee went for a company travel, and they paid a taxi fare. They will come and reclaim that taxi fare because you know, they, they pay that money for business travel. And so they'll bring a receipt, they'll fill in a voucher, because there, there must be documentation. Nobody can just come and take away the money from the petty cashier. They need to prove it, why they need it, for, the, for what reason, what is the date, who's taking it, the signature. All of that will be listed on the, the petty cash voucher. Got it? That's the business document used in this context. Petty cash voucher. So some employee comes, fills in the petty cash voucher, he needs the money or she needs the money for travels, and let's say $20 will be taken away from the box. Now, only 480 remains. Let's say that's all happened in the in the whole period. That's all happened. That's all what happened. And, uh, well, the period ended after one week. What will refill? We'll refill $20. Because that's what it spent. That's what was spent. And so 480, the remaining amount, Plus the refill amount, we have a total of $500. Again, we're back to float or the impressed amount. You all good with this? Yes, sir. All right. So Fatima is here. And Fatima, we started recording this as well. You can watch that again. We're we're doing this new, new chapter, Petty Cash Book. And I was introducing... Well, I have pretty much introduced the concept already. You can watch the rec recording, but um, I will give you uh, the basic idea of it. So, petty cash book is the mini cash book, right? And it is it has something called the impress system, where every period starts with a fixed amount. Let's say five hundred, two hundred dollars, whatever we decide. So, we have one main cash book which we learned about in the last few classes. It also has a recording, and we have a petty cash book, which is essentially mini cash book for small transactions, right? Every period starts with a fixed amount. So what you do is you take some money from your bank or cash, your main cash book, and you put it into a petty cash box. 
and your employees will take away little amounts from there for small expenses like traveling and stuff right and then once the period ends let's say during a period 20 dollars were spent and at the end we have 480 remaining the chief cashier the the from the main cash book we will take away 20 put it into petty cash and now we are back to 500 so again the new week will start with 500 dollars every period starts with the same amount that's called the impressed amount or the float when employee comes to take away something like employee wants let's say money for traveling they need to fill in something called petty cash voucher as shown here petty cash voucher this is the proof or let's say yeah proof of paying out so we have petty cash here at the end of the week we need, we will ask them where did the money go where where did the 500 go they will say $20 went to this guy and uh, you know 50 went there 20 went there the proof of that will be petty cash voucher, not their word of mouth, right? Petty cash voucher acts as a proof. And it, it, it's just a formal way to take money from the petty cashier, right? Nobody can just come in, take the money and leave. They need to fill in a voucher. They need to give the reason for taking the money. They need to sign it. The date should be given. The amount should be written. All of those things should appear in the petty cash voucher. Uh, do you have the introduction, Fatima? Do you get the introduction of it? Yes. Okay. So, as I said, for a detailed one, you can watch the video again. State two advantages of maintaining a petty cash book. One thing is uh, it reduces number of entries in the main one. In the main cash book, if you put all those small details, it's going to fill it up so so quick. So, what we do is we create this petty cash book where we enter all the small transactions, all the small expenses. So, the main cash book does not have all those. The main cash book only has one amount removed, like 500 once, and that's it. That's one advantage. Secondly, it can save the chief cashier's time. So you have a chief cashier who maintains the main cash book. We, we delegate the responsibility to a junior staff member or maybe the receptionist. So the main cashier now has more time focusing on other, other tasks rather than maintaining these little expenses. This responsibility is outsourced. You can get these points from here. Junior staff member, it will also act as a training for the junior staff member, right? Training for junior staff member. The chief cashier has more time doing other stuff. And then also, uh, well, that, that's about it. These are, these are the advantages. Let's keep moving. You can watch this. I mean, you can read this, guys. Let's, move, let's keep moving. The impress system, I have explained to you what that is. Each period starts with, a period, uh, with an amount. Who gives this amount? The chief cashier. The chief cashier approves the amount and then the petty cashier keeps that in a cash box. Sometimes it is too much, so we'll change that value. Sometimes it's too little. The week finished and we are already out of money. We need to run a whole month from it. So let's say a, a petty cashier is getting $500 a month. And after one week, 500 is gone. The chief cashier, we, we need to contact the chief cashier. We'll say 500 is too little. It's not even enough to, you know, uh, go through the quarter of a month. And so the chief cashier, if everything is okay, will, will move it up to about 2,000 per month, right? So this can be adjusted. It's not like it's fixed forever, but it's fixed once it's fixed. And then at the end of the period, let's say 1,950 was spent, right? This was spent. How much do we need to refill? What is remaining? The remaining amount is $50. So how much needs to be refilled? Who knows? Who can tell? The remaining amount is 50. Please go ahead. How much needs to be restored? We have 50 left. Are you? Are you anybody can answer it. Please go ahead. Sir, 1950 were spent. Yes. And 50 were left. Mm. And now we need to refill. You know, we cannot now start the new month with 50. We have 50 right now, but what are we going to do? How much are we going to restore? 50. So we'll run the whole month on 100? Guys, this is very, very straightforward logic. Uh. What is the impressed amount in this situation? Do you realize that? The impressed amount? What, 
What is the impressed amount? Anybody? Uh, 2,000. 2,000 is the impressed amount. We are left with 50. So how much needs to be recovered or re refilled or, re, you know? Nine, uh, 90,000. You mean 1,950? Yeah, 1,950. We need to refill that much, right? We need to re, re enter. I, I mean, there's another word for it. I was using it, but I just forgot. This, it needs to be re what? There was another word for it. Restored, right. 1950 restored. I mean, the idea is to just refill. Now, when we have 50 remaining, we add 1950 to we're back at 2000, which is the impressed amount. That is the idea, right? It's okay. If you got confused, it's your first time. But guys, start using your logic as well, right? Feel more confident. Maybe maybe all of you knew we're going to do this, but you were just not so confident. So start having confidence under your own uh, on, on your own self. Okay, that's the impressed amount. We refilled, and now we're back at 2,000, and then the month will go on as it is. And then it needs to be restored. Again, if it is too much or too little, we will contact the chief cashier. The petty cashier will contact the chief cashier. Okay? Let's keep moving. Uh, well, we we have some interesting things here to read as well. Let's see. Under this system, the chief cashier is aware of exactly how much petty cash has been spent in each month, right? In this case, 1950. And they also have something called petty cash vouchers to know where the money went. So this acts as a good control procedure. This means that petty cash expenditure can be controlled. You get it? Controlled as in the petty cashier, uh, I mean, chief cashier knows how much money is being spent on these little activities. Do we have to are we going every month maybe we're we're going up and up and so we have to focus like we we at least have that in our consideration right how much are we spending a month the amount of impress can be adjusted as as necessary if it's too much or not enough the impress system can also help reduce fraud the fact that we have vouchers and the fact that our main cash book is left untouched right well, for a small transactions we we do them in the petty cash book and so the main cash book stays away from, you know, uh, being used again and again. The main cash book is not used that much. It helps reduce fraud, right? I think we can keep moving on. Explain the meaning of impress system of petty cash. Can you explain? Every period starts with a fixed amount and that amount is reimbursed or we can say re, again, I'm forgetting the word, restored at the end of the period back to the float or back to the impressed amount. That is the idea of impress system. Are we all good with this? Yes, sir. All right, let's move on. Explain what is petty, explain what the petty cash, and everybody means Saleh or what? Who's everybody? Yes. So come on, tell me, is it all good? Yes. Fatima? Mm, yes. Okay. Explain what the petty cashier should do if he or she thinks the impress amount is inadequate. Anybody knows what they can do, what the petty cashier can do with that? Uh, please be a bit confident and tell me what you think. Sir, it is the amount spent on a short period of time. Is that the question? Explain what the petty cashier should do if he or she thinks the impressed amount is inadequate. It's not enough. <coughs> oh, I'm sorry uh, that uh, because of the underline, I thought it's All right. that. Got it. But what do you think about that one? Look, don't be scared. Like, I mean, don't be afraid of wrong answers. Go ahead, please give it a shot. Can yes. I try? Go ahead. Sir, we will restore the amount. Well, I mean, it is connected, but that's not the idea. If the petty cashier thinks the money is not enough, if the petty cashier thinks the money is not enough, one month finishes, petty cashier realizes we we don't have enough money. The next month we don't have enough money. Two thousand is not enough, or five hundred is not enough. I gave you even an example. You guys are not focusing as you should in the class. 
Um, I mean, half of the stuff, I would say 80% of the stuff is just going above, I mean, through your head, over your head, I mean. Um, yeah, that's unfortunate, guys. Try to focus more, you know, get your, get good sleep before the class, eat something, drink something, so you, your brain is able to focus in the class. Anyway, so the idea here is the petty cashier should go to the chief cashier. We talked about this a few minutes ago. Petty cashier should talk to the chief cashier and then readjust the impressed amount. Simple. If petty cashier thinks the amount is inadequate, should contact the chief cashier and adjust the impressed amount. Right? That's all. It, it should be given somewhere above. You can go and read this. Uh, the impress system, wait. The amount of impress can be adjusted by talking to the chief cashier. We can go ahead, move on with this. The layout, how does a petty cash book look like? Again, we have the debit side. It's part of double entry system. We have the debit side, credit, credit side. All the money received goes on the debit side. The amounts paid will be going on the credit side. So we'll, we'll keep it simple. Amounts received on the debit, amounts paid on the credit. But then there's analysis as well. What does that analysis mean? We'll see that later. Okay, we'll come to that. How do we prepare a petty cash book? We have two sides again. During the period, we have money received and money paid. Anything coming in, any amounts coming in will be debited. So for example, when the period starts, they get 500, right? As a, as an, as a float, as an impressed amount. And that money is received into petty cash book will be debited in the petty cash book, right? Bank or cash credit, petty cash book debit. You get it? Petty cash book debit by let's say 500 and bank or cash will be credited by 500. So we took away some money from our bank Put it into petty cash book. Sounds good? Hope you all get that. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Then mm, yes. the little money, the, the little amounts paid for traveling, for stationery, for telephone, all these amounts paid will be written on the credit side, as you will see soon. Here. I, I'll, I mean, we'll go through this walkthrough, but I'll just show you how it works. So in the beginning, we have some balance. Well, in other cases, you will not have balance. You will have, you know, bank or cash, double entry with bank or cash. So on this side, you will either see bank or cash. In this case, it seems the uh, impressed amount is 150. So the period starts with 150. And then we pay window cleaner, 10. We pay pens and pencils, 4. We pay h Sing, one of our suppliers. We pay taxi fare. We pay computer paper. So we are paying all these amounts. We're also going to categorize them. This is the main entry, but then we are going to put them in analysis column. This is known as known as analysis columns, right? We're going to put them in analysis columns. So if it's window cleaning, put it under cleaning. Pens and pencils, stationery. H sing goes into one of our ledger accounts. It's the sales ledger, uh, sorry, purchase ledger account. Taxi fare, traveling. Computer paper, stationery. You get it. We categorize. Bus fares, sure. traveling. Yeah. Go ahead. What if? Um... For example, if we add up these amounts and it's over 150. It cannot be. It's impossible. You know why? Because it's physical money we're talking about. It's just like cash account. It can never be credit. Like it's the it's, physical... Uh, happening uh, with you. You're, not, you're giving them cash. Exactly. You have the physical amount in your hand. So you cannot okay. give away more than you have, right? Okay, yeah. That is the idea. Good question though. Very good. The same way cash account works. You see, cash account maintains the physical cash we have. Bank account can be credit, balance, that's fine. Bank account credit side can be bigger, means we can pay more than we have. We can spend more than we have in bank account. In cash account, we cannot. In petty cash account, we cannot. Pe petty cash book is the physical cash, right? So if we only have 150, how can we spend more than that? Good question. So anyway, in this case, we spent a total of 115, 40 on cleaning. You see how it's all categorized? 11 on stationery, 12 on traveling, and 52 on paying our suppliers. You see, these amounts will now go into what? Cleaning account, stationery account, travel expense account. These all three accounts will be debited in their own accounts. If you go to cleaning, you see debited. Stationery, debited. You see that? Traveling expense, debited. The totals. Yes. Sir. Not the individuals. You see cleaning, there, there are two cleanings, 10 and 30. We put them here as a list. We total them and we put the total under the cleaning account. You guys got it? 
ledger account we cannot put total anywhere we need to take individual so we'll put that in hsing we'll put that in a sharma so we go to hsing debit hsing and debit a sharma these are our suppliers when you pay your suppliers your liabilities go down when liabilities go down you put them on the debit side and we're done with the chapter can you imagine so we'll just go through this walkthrough and we'll be done that's it Matri, I, I always struggle with these names, keeps an anal analyzed petty cash book using Impress system. She uses Impress system, that means she ha she starts with one fixed balance and then, you know, uh, enters the payments on the credit side, all the money received on the debit side. The money received is rare. In a petty cash, you may receive a refund, let's say. You spend some money on stationery, later on you receive a refund. That's the kind of received, that's what, that's something you may get here on the debit side. Uh, besides that, you can get the money restored. As you can see, there was balance of 35. The petty cash, uh, sorry, the, the float is 150. So we need to refill 115. And now it gives us 150. Hope you guys got that final part. Please tell me if you did. Do you understand this? Again, you one one more. Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, sure, not your I'm, fault. Okay. I, I'm running through it. I understand. I realize that I'm going really fast. So if you don't understand, yeah. just ask me to repeat, please. <laughs> Sally, your mic is sure on. I understand you can take 90, but... I got it. It's okay, you understand 80, 90%, 50%, doesn't matter. The first time, even if you take away 50%, 60% of what we're saying, it's good. Because you're going to practice, they're going to revise. It's not your fault if you don't take away 100%. It's natural. The point here I'm making, uh, the point I'm trying to make here is, you have a balance, right? It's brought down on the debit side, 35. After, you see, we had 150 in the beginning. We spent all these amounts. We spent 115 in total. And now we're left with 35, right? That's the balance, 35 remaining. The impressed amount is 150. Remove 35. 115 is what we need to refill, right? To recover everything back, to re refill that back to 150. Are you getting the point? And now you see, on the debit, we already had 35. This is what we already had left. We're left with this. And we bring in 115 more. Now we have a total of 150. That's what we have. And now we'll start spending. That's the first date, December 1. Sounds good? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Now you see our, our period is starting with 150. Petty cash book debit, cash account credit. We took away money, $150 cash from the main cash book, put it into petty cash book, and now we uh, go as, 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 as usual. I mean, business as usual, right? Okay. It starts with an opening balance. Normally, it's not an opening balance. Normally, it is a transfer from the bank or cash account, okay? Then paid window cleaner, bought pencils. As we saw, we have actually seen it without, without even looking at the question. We, we understood what's going to happen, right? Paid taxi, fare, credit bought computer paper. I think you guys should be able to understand that easily, right? So as they mention all these expenses, we listed them here, we analyze them. Remember, we just total the analysis columns. We put analysis column for expenses. All these analysis, analysis columns, all the expense accounts will be debited to the expense accounts. And these ledger accounts will be debited to the individual accounts. You see where, where the circles are. This is what we will transfer, $40, $40 debited in cleaning, $11 debited in stationery, $12 debited in traveling. Although it was a bro broken down, we total and then we transfer. We could have transferred four and seven separately, but we don't have to because both of them are going to end up in stationery. For the ledger accounts, however, one of them is going to end up in HSing, one of them is going to end up in A Sharma, as you will see here. You need to go through this again for revision. And then, as I said, we spent a total of 115. Logically, we know that that's going to be recovered. But let's balance first. Balance CD on the smaller side, balance BD on the bigger side. In the cash box, when we look into it, we find $35. And of course, we will get a reimbursement of 115 Why 115 Because we need to bring it back up to 150 